Let's talk a little bit about, uh, the show here. I get 68.9% thumbs up on the wrestling observer. Um, or I'm sorry, 68.9% thumbs down. So it's not well received. And Meltzer would say the final pay-per-view event of the year just exemplified the company's biggest problem, the lack of a new superstar. Perhaps the most surprising aspect of the ups and downs of the industry in recent years is the lack of great athletes who've tried to get into the business that grew up during the boom period. Just a few years ago, pro wrestling was more visible than ever and as popular on a national basis as it has been in decades, if ever. One would think this would be a period where people who grew up watching wrestling when it was a big deal would be wanting to follow in the footsteps of their heroes. In fact, it hasn't worked out that way. And you don't see a slew of ex NFL fringe players or national caliber wrestlers in WWE developmental like you did just a few years ago. Now, granted the company cut way back on its developmental budget, which two years from now will be looked at as a much bigger story than it is now. And that is something I think we should talk about because you have said before on this program, wrestling fans want new wrestling fans love new. And we know how important that was to your business when you were running talent relations. And certainly Gerald Briscoe's out there scouting and guys like Jim Cornette are cranking out superstars like John Cena and Batista and so many others. Yeah. But we're a few years in at this point and it doesn't feel like we have like that next big thing right around the corner. And Meltzer's wondering how much of that is because we cut the developmental budget. Do you think in hindsight, it was a mistake to do that? I ask because about 10 years later after this is when we do the whole NXT thing and, and have a big facility. And as I understand it, it's been a loss leader for them, but it's paying dividends. Now they just landed yeah. a big television deal with the CW and it feels like they've got just a loaded roster of top stars. And a lot of those were guys who went through that system. Chat me up. Do you think at the time here, it was a mistake? in hindsight to cut the developmental budget. Absolutely. It's one of those situations where it's change for change sake. Uh, you, you can't replace great, you know, great athletes, uh, with nothing with, with, uh, performers with workers. Uh, it's just too grueling a business when you factor in, as we've talked about earlier, the travel, so forth, the physicality guys working a little snugger, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I was totally against it because what we had done, Conrad worked. Look at the stars. You know, you, you mentioned the, the Cornette's involvement, which was invaluable, but you know, I signed, uh, uh, Lesnar and Batista, Cena, Shelton and, uh, Randy Orton. That was one class and. So that system, excuse me, was working. So, uh, why change it? The only reason you would change it is that if you, your budget was reduced to the level that you couldn't pay some of these top guys, uh, to give it a shot. And, uh, we were spending big money before that. And then some of those funds were, uh, pulled back. And I think that was a huge mistake. And, and like I said, now you, the athleticism in all national television brands are probably at an all time high. So it came full circle, luckily for the wrestling business. Let's, uh, let's talk about Meltzer's take. He says, this feels more like a house show with Steve Austin, not on the show. It's noticeable that the big baby face reaction isn't there, but still we got 9,000 fans in Orlando for the event a $450,000 gate. Let's get right into the matches. We start off with Booker T and Mark Henry. I also would say the match was too long for Henry. And even in winning the program with Booker has taken him down a notch. So he's saying this isn't good for Booker. He's opening the show against Mark Henry, who we both think a lot of, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. Is this the best use of Booker to be opening a pay-per-view like this? The opening part of it, I don't buy into because I've seen some great matches. You know, I've told this story about having to talk Eddie Guerrero off the ledge one night because he was opening the pay-per-view. I don't recall what pay-per-view it was, but, uh, it, it was a scenario where he felt, uh, underappreciated mm -hmm. until I sat down with him and explained how at least our concept 
was going to work or not, but we believe it was going to work. And it also set the table, set the bar high, in other words, uh, for, uh, the rest of the show. So I said, what I would do if I were you, Eddie is go out there and steal the show, you know, and I, I've heard these old stories where they, the, the main event guys would get on to the other guys that preceded them on the show for, for stealing their thunder. You mean outworking you? Yeah. I mean, performing better. So that, that happened there. So I don't, the, the opening, the show is irrelevant to me. Uh, and, and uh, I'm, I wasn't crazy about that booking. I don't know what, no matter how creative you could create, you could handle the outcome and the creative, it still was, uh, uh, chemistry and things of that nature had an, it had an impact on that, but cause both those guys are deserving of better. And, uh, you know, uh, I, uh, it, it just didn't work out. So I, the, the opening of the show didn't bother me as I said, uh, but we could have done better booking with both guys if we had put more thought into it. We, uh, we got to mention that Mark Henry is going to go on to become one of the better heels in WWE. I don't know that we were quite there yet in 2003. Speaking of not quite there yet in 2003, there was apparently a fire on the ramp as the flames from the Armageddon set are going to catch on fire on the uh, entrance <laughs> ramp. It's never shown or acknowledged on TV, but as this match is going on, all the workers are there with fire extinguishers trying to put it out. We've seen a few of these scary moments with fire over the years in WWE. Uh, how stressful is this for you when it feels like there might be an emergency situation in the building? Yeah. There's also a match going on in the ring and you're supposed to call it. And it is a live pay-per-view. <laughs> so Jim pay no mind to the fire and the emergency yeah. happening. Let's All get right. excited about Mark Henry and Booker T here. Let's yeah. Let's just hope that the fire marshal doesn't say the building's got to be evacuated. Right. That's a little scary. So yeah, it was, uh, we're in an area where we're on paper. Some of these concepts uh, look viable, but the practical application of them, especially using something as unpredictable as fire or, you know, I know that wasn't planned, but, uh, we dodged a bullet there. Cause it would have been very easy for somebody to say, hold on shows over. And, uh, that didn't happen. Thank God. 